This week we're going to learn how to generate PDF reports using FPDF. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to look at, or at least start looking at, generating PDF reports. This is a pretty common task. Maybe you need to do some data QC or help generate items automatically for some kind of climatology. Well, we're going to use a tool called FPDF to do this. There are a number of tools out there that you can use to generate PDFs. One of the other popular tools is called Report Lab. Report Lab does have a lot of features, but it can get pretty complicated with a lot of HTML and CSS type work. And uh, though they do have an open source version that's pretty powerful, to get the full power of Report Lab, there's a pretty hefty license. FPDF, on the other hand, is maybe not as easy to use and not as fully featured, but it is, of course, completely free and open source, and it does everything that I need, which I can make some pretty complicated reports with it. So what we're going to do is look at the basics of using FPDF, generate a document, put some headers and footers on it, and then next week, we're going to look at how we can ingest some data from the National Data Buoy Center. And then we can make that report have a table in it and maybe even add some maps. So let's get started. From FPDF, we're going to import the FPDF object. This is the basic document PDF object. We're going to create an instance of that object, fpdf. We're going to call the add page method. And there are lots of ways to do page breaks and line breaks that are all in the documentation, and we'll explore some of those as well. Then we're going to set the font. This is just going to be a simple hello world document. Use the Arial font. We can set a face if we want, like a bold face. And the font size is 16. So it's the font family, then the font style, and the font size here. And then the part that can get a little confusing until you're used to it, everything goes in a cell. You can set the units for the cell dimensions to be millimeters or inches or whatever you'd like, uh, the default being millimeters. So first is the width, then the height, so 40 by 10. Hello, MetPy, and our text. There are other options after this that you can pass, such as a border, where the cursor should go afterwards, the alignment, any color fills, but we're going to keep it simple to start off here. And now that we've created our PDF, we need to actually save it. So much like in matplotlib, you use save fig. In fpdf, we call pdf.output, report.pdf, and we're going to save it as a file. Now, you could actually use matplotlib to create your whole PDF. It's just the positioning might get a little finicky, and uh, it's not really the right tool, though you can certainly do so. So this is the report that we're shooting for. And this is the report that we've got right now. Hello, MetPy. So we're in from the edge by our margin amount. We have a 40 by 10 cell. If we want to add a border, the border is the next argument. And this is one of the things that I say make, makes FPDF not necessarily very user friendly. Uh, border equals zero or border equals one, ln equals zero, and the doc strings don't have a lot of description of all of these things. The online documentation, the read the docs page, is pretty good. So you do have to have that up on your second screen or flip back and forth between tabs. So other than being a little difficult to use that way until you get used to it, that's really a pretty great package. And there we go. 
So now we can see hello MetPy, and it's on the left side of that cell. We could specify some alignment. So align would be our keyword argument. We could align to center. And now hello MetPy is in the center of that cell. So that's great. We can create a cell. We can position that cell. Now our cursor is by default at the end of that cell. And we can keep adding elements to our document. But really what we need in a lot of reports is a standardized header and footer. So before we get too crazy with adding things into the document, we're going to create a header and a footer. Now you could, of course, create some little function that creates a header, then you put your content in, then it creates a footer. But what we're going to do is create a subclass of the FPDF class and define header and footer methods. And then FPDF is smart enough to use those for us automatically. All right, so we're going to class. I'm just going to call my class PDF from FPDF. I'm going to create a header method that takes self. And we're going to put a logo on. I've got the Unidata logo, which you can get in the MetPy repository. Or you can use your own logo, of course. Unidata 150 by 150.png, using tab completion to help me out there. I'm going to specify a width of 15 millimeters. And we're going to set the font to be Arial, bold. And for example, if you wanted a regular font, you might think R for regular typeface, but it's actually empty string. That's one of those things that until you've done it and read the docs is not incredibly intuitive. Uh, 12 point. I'm going to set the position of my cursor using set XY at 0, 0. Then make sure I'm in that upper left position. Use a cell. I'm going to make it 200 wide, 40 tall, current, buoy, summary. So I want that at the top of every page. Uh, let's see, I don't want a border uh, using the zero, which means just keep the cursor at the end of this cell is fine. And right align it. And I'm going to put a line break in, that's 20 millimeters. I'm going to define a footer method. Set the Y position minus 15. So outside of our margin. Set font. Again, be Arial. This time we're going to italicize it. And eight point. Another cell. Uh, zero, 10. I'm going to use the text page space string self dot page number. So these are things that you would have to look in the class FPDF to know what they are, that it's storing page number in this uh, attribute called page no. Okay, and then this is going to show the total number of pages in B. And we're going to center. Now, again, you'd have to go dig pretty deep into the FPDF class to find some of these things or look in their examples because it's a pretty common thing to want to put page numbers in a footer. So they have an example for us of how to do that, and it saves you some time looking things up. But I've tweaked and played around with the header and footer to get them the style I like. So we're going to create a PDF. 
that is an instance of our PDF class now, which has all the goodness of FPDF plus these header and footer methods that we've added. I'm going to add a page. And for now, let's just copy our hello MetPy. But I'm going to move it a little bit here. I'm going to make a cell at 60 by 40 just to make sure we get out of the, the header. Now let's look at our report now. Okay, so you can see our cell. It's got that border on it, which we probably don't want, but that's okay. We'll come back and fix that. We've got our Unidata logo in the upper left, current buoy summary in the upper right. At the bottom, while we're close, uh, we see NB. And well, as it turns out, we need to call a special function that says we're going to alias the variable NB to be the number of pages. This is another one of those weird, not super Pythonic things, uh, but it does do the job. So in PDF, we're going to call the alias NB pages method. We regenerate our report. And now the variable MB has become the number of pages, and everything magically works for us here. So now we've got a header and a footer, a basic document set up. Next week we're going to learn how to take some data from the National Data Buoy Center and make a table from it that we can put into here. It's not going to be an HTML table, it's going to be good old-fashioned loops and creating cells manually. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.